Welcome everyone. Um, today we have members of the HERO team with us to discuss how your organization can get the most out of your HERO membership. I'm going to allow each team member to introduce themselves and their role with HERO and you'll hear from them throughout the webinar as they discuss their respective areas. So I'll start. My name is Marian Bowden and I am HERO's membership manager and research associate. As the membership manager, I am the point person for all members, helping you to navigate how to get involved with HERO-related activities, how to set up your account or an account for a colleague, and really any questions that you have. And at the very least, I can put you in touch with the right person if I don't know how to answer those questions. Um, and then as HERO's research associate, I'm engaged in the HERO research committees and work alongside Jessica, who you'll hear from in a second, um, and our members on HERO sponsored research projects. Um, we are a remote team, and so I actually am from Portland, Oregon, um, in the Pacific Northwest. And now I'll let Karen introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today and having a chat with us about how you can maximize your member benefit. I am uh, HERO's president. I have the distinct privilege of leading this beautiful team and this wonderful organization. And I am calling in this morning from my home office in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And I am Jessica Grossmeyer. I'm vice president of research at HERO. And in that role, I oversee HERO sponsored research studies. I also oversee the HERO scorecard. And um, I am dialing in from sunny California, Gilroy specifically. Hi, I'm Ariane Mistral. Um, I work on many things at HERO, uh, namely on the education programs. Um, I produce the webinars. Um, I put out the briefs every month, uh, work on the promos. Um, and I hope to be doing a lot of work with all of you. Um, I am here in Minnesota. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Pat Rohner. I am the Director of Marketing for HERO, and I'm calling in from our East Coast headquarters in North Carolina. Uh, that's a joke. We, it's just that more of us live in North Carolina. Uh, and I work heavily with our sponsors and our partners. And I am Emily Wolf. I'm also calling in from North Carolina. I'm in Charlotte, and I am HEROES Committee Project Manager. Um, I oversee study committees and work with ad hoc committees and awards and healthcare summit. So thank you for joining us today. Okay, so we're going to go off camera as we go through our slide deck to kind of show you uh, membership benefits and how to get the most out of your membership. Here's an outline of what we'll be going over today. Um, as you heard from the team, um, we'll be talking about Hero Committees, the Resource Center, um, social media, and getting your guys' name out there, um, Hero events, and then research as well. To start off, I wanted to just share with you a visual of where our members are located. We do have members in all regions of the country, which does help to bring different stories, ideas, and perspectives to our meetings and on our committees. You can also see that um, in regions near you where members are located, um, and this may help you to actually network and collaborate, collaborate with other members. And this does happen quite often with HERO. One of the things that our uh, members say is one of their uh, the benefits they get the most out of HERO is networking with other industry professionals. You can also check out our website under the membership link and that'll give you a list of all of our HERO members to date. Thanks, Mary. Hi, everybody. This is Emily Wolf again, Committee Project Manager. Um, volunteers uh, are a core feature of, of HERO and, and the work that we get done here. Um, as a member of HERO, uh, you are able to um, assign, if you will, multiple um, people from your organization to serve on committees at HERO. 
Um, one of the advantages of serving on a committee is not only networking, but helping to advance the research agenda, support our strategic priorities, and it's a great opportunity to share what's happening in your space with others, um, HERO members, and explore new ideas. Uh, we do have opportunities for HERO members and some opportunities for non-members alike. Next slide, please, Mary. So here's a list of our, our current committees. We have um, standing committees, we have study committees, we also have ad hoc committees. Um, Mary, if you could click on the hyperlink, that'd be great. And so to learn more about each committee um, and see examples of deliverables that we have published, uh, you can go to the committees page on the HERO website. On the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see committee publications, and you can sort by um, category, uh, categories being the different committees. Um, and then if you were to scroll further down on the left side, um, there's a description of each committee we have, um, as well as a, a link to the charter. Um, you'll hear more about uh, some of the committees throughout the webinar today, and I can briefly explain um, what does it look like to serve on a study committee. So if you could go to the next slide, please, Mary. Thanks. So study committees are comprised, again, of, of volunteers. Um, we typically meet either monthly or bimonthly for an hour via conference call. Uh, sometimes we have video calls. We have an overarching um, study committee. And then to pursue the deliverables in that committee charter, we develop work groups. And I, I kind of describe the work groups as the worker bees of the committee. Um, example deliverables. Uh, would be case studies, employer briefs, white papers, literature reviews, things of that nature. And you can have multiple people from your company um, represented on a committee um, and across multiple committees. Uh, if you have any additional questions, please visit the, the committee page. There's tons of information there um, that you can access. Thank you. Okay, so one of the benefits um, as a member is you're granted access to the HERO Resource Center, which is an online library of presentations, white papers, committee deliverables, and research that have been presented at HERO forums, think tank meetings, and in publications. We do offer an exclusive password to all members of your organization interested in accessing the Resource Center. And if you have colleagues at your organization interested in having access, please let me know and I'll provide them with unique hero credentials. When you, a lot of questions that we get um, are around, or at least that I get, are around how to access this resource center. So again, you'll get this unique username and password. And when you go on the hero website, there is a place where you can um, select member login where you'll enter this username and password. From there, you can request access to our think tank member library. Um, and then this would give you access to um, these different um, resources for you. I'm not going to be able to show you this today and how to do it. However, if you have trouble with it, um, I would say one, check the username and password. If you're not sure, you forgot your password, please contact me and I can help you with that. Um, again, this is Mary. And um, otherwise we can set up a time where I can do a screen share with you and take you step-by-step step, um, along this process. Hi, this is Pat Rona rejoining you again. And I would like to chat just for a moment about HERO's public relations. We do this to support HERO in its mission. As always, we're striving to get the word out on the work being done and promote the advancements in the field. We do this in many ways. We outreach to the media. We're constantly trying to share content and our successes. Of course, we're partnering with both members and industries, other organizations. And if Mary could go to the next slide. We have a very significant presence on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Out there at any of these, you can find highlights of what HERO's doing, its current events, its 
its current studies, where it is in the media, and you can often find links that take you directly to those items. Mary, moving forward, as a result of much of our outreach and hard work, in a one-year snapshot, Hero generated over 2.6 billion gross impressions. Again, that's in one year time frame. And we published articles or were mentioned in articles in all of these listed publications. Hero constantly strives to move the mission forward and grow these numbers and lists. To look next at Hero's events, I'd like to pass you over to Hero's president, Karen Mosley. Karen. Thanks, Pat. And I, I just want to make sure everyone saw that that's 2.6 billion with a B. Um, so that, that's um, something that we're, we're pretty proud of, um, the communications that we've, that we've built here. So Mary, if you'll go to the next slide, I want to talk a little bit about the educational events that HERO offers, um, some exclusively as a member benefit and um, another that is open to members and non-members alike. But um, truly, one of a really important member benefit is your access to our three times a year think tank meetings. Each member organization gets two seats at the table absolutely free. Um, you just have to, to pay travel and hotel, but once you get there, there's no registration fee, there's no charge for food, and, and we really strive to um, offer at each think tank meeting a discussion on a forward-thinking topic, and most most of our think tanks, if not all, um, will connect the dots between areas that might otherwise seem unrelated. As I said, we have three meetings per year, one in the winter, um, this year it's in February, another in the spring, summer, and then in the fall, we uh, our fall meeting is a half day the day before our forum. And these really are significant opportunities for networking at some more intimate, um, space we and it's a, a, a varied approach to the meeting it's not all talking heads and slides um, there is a lot of opportunity for small group roundtable discussions and we will produce uh, recordings and often proceedings following the uh, think tank meeting so that's an additional opportunity and especially valuable for those who are unable to attend next week in Fort Lauderdale we will be talking about burnout and banana cream pie. And Mary, if you will click on the link, I'd just like to show everyone on the website um, where you can always find our think tank meetings listed. It's the think tank meetings page. You can see up upcoming meetings. We've got the winter think tank meeting listed with links to the agenda and making your hotel reservation and, and registration. We do ask you to register, but again, no charge. Um, and this is where you can always come to find updates on the agenda and also details on future meetings. So I'll take this opportunity just to um, call out a save the date. Our spring summer think tank is planned for Minneapolis on May 19th. You don't see it on the website yet, but we are wrapping up final details for the hotel and um, a fun networking event afterward. Um, it's possible we'll be trying out a little rooftop lawn bowling this year. Um, in previous years, we've had bocce and bowling um, and, and giant Jenga. So stay tuned for that. And if you're on our distro list, you will, of course, be getting updates there. So Mary, let's go back to the slide deck and I'll talk a little bit about Forum. This is our marquee annual event for the industry. And it, it, it's two and a half days um, jam-packed with networking and educational opportunities. We attract about 500 attendees every year, over 100 speakers, and we also offer um, events the day before the start of forum, focused on topics unique to universities and healthcare systems. And of course, we do, again, have recordings of selected sessions, and those are archived and available only to members in our member resource center. Next slide. Year after year, the top two reasons that we hear from attendees for why they even come to Forum is education and networking. HERO is a provider of CHES and MCHES continuing education credits, and we are known for highlighting what employers are doing in the health and well being for their employees through breakout sessions, keynotes, panels, and deep dives. 
Um, there's also a, uh, often a musical selection to, to kick off the forum, and, and we won't disappoint this year. We've got one in the works. Um, we do have slides available via the forum mobile app during the event, and then we also archive them, of course, for our members only in the resource center. The adult playground has become a popular recent addition with cornhole or hole-in-one golf tournaments, beer tastings, giant Jenga, and a photo booth. Who knows what 2020 will have in store? And we also recognize leaders with the Hero Awards and employer success stories with the C. Everett Coop Awards. Um, and, and it wouldn't be a forum without making sure we're giving you lots of ways to move through morning fitness classes, group walks, and runs. It is uh, my privilege, truly, to work with Paul, Dr. Paul Terry, Hero Senior Fellow, to plan these think tank meetings and, and the forum event year after year, and of course, the whole team, um, because as you can see, we are a small but mighty team, um, and we, we go by the slogan, uh, hashtag teamwork makes the dream work. And I, we just, it, it truly is a team effort um, and a huge lift, but uh, certainly rewarding when we see all that is accomplished every year through our think tank meetings and forum. Next slide, Mary. So I just want to conclude my um, part of the presentation to, to emphasize that there are a number of ways for members to um, benefit and participate specifically with forum. I, I started out talking about the think tank benefit, but your forum benefit is that every employee of a hero member organization receives a $100 discount on registration. Groups of five or more can receive an additional $100 per, per person discount. As a member, you have the, the uh, opportunity to volunteer to serve on the education committee which uh, every spring is reviewing all of the submissions that are submitted through our call for presenters and, and helps inform and shape the agenda for the, for the forum. You can volunteer as a room facilitator for forum breakout sessions. And you don't have to be a member to submit a proposal, but I will put in a plug here, and Mary, if you'll click on that last hyperlink, we have extended, extended the deadline for submissions. So now you have until Friday, March 13th, to submit a proposal for Hero Forum 20. Um, at the top of this page, you can click on the link to submit a proposal and you can see the submission guidelines. And you'll want to check back this page, uh, this page um, often because we will continue to update it with special event details, with information on the pre-forum selections, university summit, the healthcare summit, and the agenda will be coming out in a few months after we have gone through the vetting process of the, the submissions and, um, and begin uh, inviting speakers for breakout sessions. We have a number of general session speakers already confirmed, so lots going on. Really excited to be, um, to be gathering in Austin, Texas into September to talk about a 2020 vision for collective well-being. I do hope that I'll see each of you at a think tank meeting soon and at forum later this year. And with that, I will pass it back to you. Thanks, Karen. I did want to mention one thing before I turn it over to Jess um, to discuss research, and that's the distribution list. Um, Karen brought up that if you're on our distribution list, you will get information about these events. Um, if you're so, if you're not on the distribution list please reach out um, and I would be happy to add you to the distribution list. Um, so you're making that, so I make sure that you get those emails and those announcements about these fun and important events. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jess. Great, thanks so much, Mary. So when it comes to research, um, when you look at HERO's name, the Health Enhancement Research Organization, research is literally our middle name. Um, we think that research is one of the many things that sets HERO as an organization apart from other industry organizations. Um, and I think the other thing that is unique is that our research is highly collaborative and member-driven. Um, while HERO staff, Mary and myself, lead and manage our research activities, we rely heavily on our members and collaborators to help ensure the research we do is practical and relevant for employers and practitioners in the industry. There are numerous ways that HERO members can get more involved in HERO's research, and most of these are through our committees, which I'll be going over in more detail here on the slide to come. But um, you can also see listed on this slide the many different ways that members contribute to advancing our research agenda. And again, I'll be going over each of these in the next slide. So 
Hero's um, mission for the research committee, which I'll discuss next, is to set the Hero research agenda, as well as to provide guidance and expertise in making Hero a respected contributor and major player in the creation, publication, and dissemination of unbiased and meaningful workplace health and well-being research and best practices. The Hero Research Committee is made up entirely of volunteers with an overarching mission to inform the direction of the, the research agenda and, and you see the rest of it here. There are two primary research subcommittees that actively meet in an ongoing way to advance the larger and broader research mission. The Hero Research Advisory Group is made up of members and non-members who have significant experience advancing population health research. Now, not all members of the Research Advisory Group, or RAG, are researchers. Many represent employers who rely on research to inform implementation of evidence-based practices. And so they're very um, experienced in working with others to conduct and apply research within an employer setting. We are especially eager to include employers in the research advisory group to ensure that the research we do meets employer needs. We don't do research just to do research and publish papers, so we do a lot of that. We want to make sure at the end of the day, the research that we produce is meaningful and useful. And that means we need to ensure that not just researchers are involved in, in conducting these studies. The research advisory group convenes a couple of times a year via webinar. and. As part of being on the RAG, you can get updates on the, the research that HERO is doing, as well as share insights about what new research is needed. The research advisory group is responsible for reviewing and updating the HERO research agenda each year, and you'll get a peek of that in just a moment. The research study subcommittee is comprised entirely of HERO members. So unlike the RAG, you do need to be a member to be a, a part of the RSS, and most but not all of the folks on our RSS serve in a research or analytics role within their organizations. The RSS is the engine that drives the execution of new research at HERO. Members help develop new proposals for research studies. They provide oversight for studies once they're launched. The RSS informs the selection of collaborators who work with us to execute a study, and they also contribute to dissemination of study findings. They also help develop the HERO scorecard commentaries and summary reviews of emerging industry research. You can see our chairs and co-chairs listed here on this slide. The other committee I'd like to share um, is not an organization that meets regularly, but that's the Measurement Standards Committee. The Measurement Standards Committee meets on more of an ad hoc basis, typically convening around specific projects related to measurement and evaluation. There are two areas of tools that the Measurement Standards Committee has already developed. The first one is the HERO scorecard, and I'm gonna say more about that in a moment. But the second that I wanted to call your attention to is the Program Measurement and Evaluation Guide. This guide was the result of a two-year collaboration between HERO and the Population Health Alliance. It brought together more than 40 member organizations from across the industry and more than 80 individuals within those organizations to identify consensus measures that should be used to evaluate workplace health and well-being initiatives. The guide identifies specific measures that can be used to evaluate health and well-being initiatives, it recommends how to measure certain types of outcomes, and it provides guidance on how to select the right types of measurement strategies for an organization's needs. And um, you can go to um, uh, the resources tab on the HERO website to get a full copy of this. I believe it's a 120 or 130 page guide. We also have an overview that was published in the Art of Health Promotion, um, which you can also find on our, our website. But let's get a little bit more into the broader research. So if you're interested in figuring out what's going on in research and how to get access to some of the resources, you can go to our HERO research webpage. And so it's um, one of the items on our main navigation. And one of the things I'd like to call your attention to is first of all, the HERO research agenda. And you'll see that there are several different hyperlinks on this page. They all pretty much take you to the same place, which is our detailed research agenda. We update this every year. And 
um, if you scroll down, what you'll see is that there are three strategic priorities that are currently comprised on the research agenda. Those have stayed pretty um, stable over the years, but then the specific projects underneath advancing those three strategic priorities, if we scroll back up to the top, we'll see that those um, include culture of health, sustainability, and performance. But then underneath that, we have committees which are um, advancing understanding in each of these areas. And these are actually study committees. So Emily mentioned that she oversees uh, many of these study committees and members of the RSS have contributed to reviewing some of that work and providing guidance when some of the work that's being done relies on research methods. For example, um, the Culture of Health um, Study Committee, they did a very systematic literature review and relied on several members of the research committee to help inform how that literature review would be conducted and then help with the publication process. Um, we also did a, a less systematic but still quite fulsome review for the engagement study committee to identify definitions, measures, and drivers of engagement. And again, research um, committee folks were plugged in there. So um, if you're interested in what we're doing, what we have going on, you can look at this page. Um, and then if you want to see what research studies Kiro has published, there's a full list of published research studies available here on this same page. There's also a hyperlink from this page. And this doesn't take you to a full text of each of the articles. What it does is it gives you an abstract written in lay language for what was the study, what did we find, and how is it useful. Um, it then provides a full citation link to where you can go to get full text of that research study. And if for some reason you're interested in a study and you just can't seem to find it or get access, just reach out to me and I can, um, or Mary can help you get access to a full version of that. But let's go back to our slide deck because I'd like to share a little bit more about the HERO scorecard with you, which is another one of the things that the research um, committee oversees. So the HERO Health and Wellbeing Best Practices Scorecard in collaboration with Mercer is a free online tool that anybody can use. We have both a US version and an international version. And um, when someone completes this, they will get back an instantaneous report that tells them what their score is, as well as compare it to national or country benchmarks. Um, more than 2,500 organizations have taken the HERO scorecard since its inception, which has allowed us to do research on the scorecard. Um, it was originally developed as an educational tool because employers were approaching HERO and saying, well, how do I know what the research says I should be doing? What are the best practices in the field? So the HERO scorecard was created with that intent as an educational tool, um, and we have used it for benchmarking so employers can see what others are doing, but we've also been using it for research purposes. Um, and a couple of the studies that I'll show you um, in a little bit, actually in the next slide, um, it was based on some of the research that we did using the HERO scorecard database. So this is a view of one of the most recently published studies that demonstrates the value of the HERO scorecard for identifying best practices. Just a quick scan of the names that are listed in the byline here um, are representatives from our research committee. Um, uh, some of them are folks that are not on our research committee, but were brought in to collaborate with us due to some subject matter expertise that they had, which was needed to, ex um, to execute this study. Um, so you can get a copy of this. Like I said, you can contact me or you can go to our research studies um, page and that will actually list um, more information about this study. Another study that I'd like to make you aware of, um, we also do consensus projects. So um, there's the formal research that we do or that tests a specific question or a hypothesis, but then we also collaborate with many organizations to develop a consensus statement around specific topics. So the one that you see on this slide here is in response to EEOC regulations around health safety and well-being initiatives, specifically the use of incentives. Um, you'll see um, in the list of collaborating organizations here, um, we obtained consensus with the American College of Occupational Environmental Medicine, American Heart Association, 
and other organizations, some of whom are HERO members and some who are not HERO members. Um, we have also done consensus papers around um, giving employers guidance on how to incorporate e-cigarettes into their policies, and we've done another consensus paper around um, biometric screening, as well as incentives. So um, if you're interested in any of those papers, again, you can go to our HERO research studies page, and that is listed. You'll also find them on the page that Emily mentioned, the resources page. All of that stuff is linked in both places. So if you can't remember which page to go to, if you go to the resources page, you'll be able to find everything there as well. And then a final way to contribute, um, whether you're on a study, on the research committee, um, some organizations are interested in helping to advance HERO's research through becoming a HERO research partner. The HERO research partner is a funding pool that allows us to bring together resources from multiple organizations to advance HERO research projects. Um, the HERO research partners help to inform which projects we pursue. Um, they give us early insights on research findings. In fact, it was members of our HERO research partners that were the very first to see the findings that have emerged from some of our recently published studies. And they can help us to understand what's useful about it, how it should be applied to the field, and we give them opportunity to collaborate on manuscripts where there's interest expressed in doing that. We also acknowledge the HERO research partners whenever findings are um, published so that um, the organizations are um, gaining um, some awareness in the field for their, for their role in contributing to these things. Um, two recent HERO research partner funded projects include the HERO scorecard study, which you saw a glance of on a previous slide, and then the current one that we're doing is looking at the influence of different types of incentive designs on population health outcomes and participation. So um, that's another way that organizations can contribute to our HERO research agenda, in addition to all of the different ways I've mentioned earlier about how to volunteer. And with that, I'm gonna toss it back over to Mary. Okay. Well, thank you guys all for listening. And we do wanna take some time, if you have questions, to answer those for you. Um, however, I will note that there are two handouts um, that are attached in this webinar today. The first is a brochure that kind of lays out all the membership benefits um, to you and your organization. And the second is um, HERO's research agenda that Jessica just talked about. Um, but with that, if you have any questions, we can answer a few now. Um, if you are need to think through your questions or if something comes up, later um, you can always contact me at my email here so it does look like we might have a question coming in all right so the question is how can we increase our chances of being selected for a presentation at forum okay so i might let you take this one yeah it's a great question um you can increase your chances by making sure that an employer is part of the presentation and, and has more than has 50% or more of the presentation time. We, we really are serious about highlighting success stories and lessons learned from, um, from those who are providing the, the, um, the initiatives and approaches for an employee workforce population. So, Include, a, include an employer uh, who's talking about what has, what good things have happened, um, outcomes that have improved for their population, and that will certainly improve your chances. Thank you. Um, we do have another question that just came in, and um, it is, I'm a member because I want to give back to my community. What's the best committee for that? So Emily, um, would you mind taking that question? Yeah, so it's they want they're looking for a committee opportunity that will afford an ability to give back to their own community. Did I hear that correctly? Yep. Yeah, the first uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the Healthy Workplaces, Healthy Communities Committee. Um, so that is a committee that has that was formed prior to to me coming to Hero about three and a half years ago. So they they've been um, hard at work for a number of years um, and, and really explore the, the business case and value of private and public partnerships in advancing community health and well-being. 
um, and those touch points between the workplace and, and the community. Um, I would suggest that to start, um, you know, and, and then of course, you know, because that has a direct connection to the community. I will say though that any of the, the committees, depending on how you are already engaged in your community, you know, you're able to take the information that you're learning um, and help disseminate it among other people um, in your community. But I would start with HWHC, Healthy Workplaces, Healthy Communities. Um, if you go to the committee page of the HERO website, um, you know, you scroll down and then you'll find the charter for Healthy Workplaces, Healthy Communities. And then on the right-hand side under committee publications, you can sort by um, Healthy Workplaces, Healthy Communities. And we have um, a recent report, Social Determinants of Health and Employer Priority, um, that we published last year. We're in the process of updating it. Um, there are also uh, case studies that we recently published, um, one for Get Healthy Utah, one for Intermountain Healthcare. Um, and, and we're seeking new case studies as well. Anybody that has a story to tell, um, you don't have to be a HERO member to submit a case study for consideration, um, but somebody that has a story to tell on, on the value and importance of, of public-private partnerships, um, again, information is on the website, on the committee page um, about that project as well. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, Jess, this next question is for you um, on research. So. The question is, does a research proposal that includes clinical endpoints require an IRB approval? I'm not sure I understood the question, Mary. Would you repeat that one more time, please? The question is, does a research proposal that includes clinical endpoints require an IRB approval? Great, thank you. So we are currently conducting a study um, that is using population level clinical health outcomes. And that study was not needed to go through an IRB because the data are aggregated at the organizational level and the data are all de-identified, um, not just at the individual level because it's aggregated, but also at the organizational level. Um, so we did not deem that that um, research project was necessary to go through an IRB. Um, it's certainly possible that in the future, HERO may um, conduct a study that requires IRB oversight. And um, in that case, we would partner and collaborate with another organization, likely an academic institution on that type of a study um, in order to get IRB approval. Thanks, Jess. Um, the next question is about the scorecard. And Jess, I'm actually happy to take it um, if you'd like. So. Is the scorecard mostly for comparing my company to others, or do people use it time over time? Um, so I'll start and then I'll let Jess chime in. Um, but the scorecard does allow you to compare your organization to organizations of similar size and of the same industry. It also allows you to compare to national averages. However, we are seeing a lot of organizations complete the scorecard year after year. And so time over time analyses are um, happening and those organizations that do so, I think really benefit from seeing the progress they're making and the advances that they're um, adding to their initiatives. So Jess, do you have anything to add to that question? Um, yeah, Mary, that was a great, great response. I think the only thing I would say to augment that, um, unlike some scorecards that are out there in the industry where if you complete it more than once, there is um, a way that the organization can be identified. So when you get your results, you get repeat time over time results. The HERO scorecard does not require that you pre-register in advance, that you have some sort of an organizational ID. Um, you can simply complete the scorecard and get your results. Um, because we do not have that requirement to set up an account in advance, um, we have no way to link previous results to current results in a report, in that instant report that you get back. And so typically what organization does if they want to take the scorecard over time is they will um, archive down their results report, their scores, 
the questions that they submitted, and we have instructions on how to do that on the Hero Scorecard interface. Um, but then you do need to kind of go back and compare your current results with your previous results. If you don't have access to those, you can reach out to Mary or myself, and we can help you get access to your previous scores um, because we do have access to the data. Um, but just so you know, if you want to do time over time comparisons, our current reporting does not render that automatically. Thanks, Jess. And Pat, this question is for you. So a member is interested in um, possibly becoming a sponsor at Forum, but they want to know what benefits come with being a sponsor of the Hero Forum. Thanks, Mary. The sponsorship benefits vary at each level. We have entry level at $6,000, $12,000, and $17,000. And we have a large list of benefits at each of those levels. We also have some very specific opportunities for nonprofit organizations. I could suggest that anyone who would like more information and details reach out to me at pat.roner at hero-health.org. And I know you're looking at Mary's email address, so just replace Mary's name with mine, which is pat.roner, R-O-H-N-E-R, -E and I'll give you more details. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, thanks, Pat. Um, and then another question is actually on um, being a university-based HERO member and how they can get their university students involved with HERO. And so I'm happy to take that one. We actually have a new membership model, which is our student membership. Um, and we have found that we, we want to get and we want to hear the voices of students and our upcoming professionals in the field. And so we made this model um, where students can get involved and they have access to the resource center and also can apply to be a student representative on the study committees that Emily mentioned. Additionally, ways to get the students involved um, if they join this membership, um, they have benefits of applying for a research, a student research award. And so a lot of our undergrad, um, but mostly graduate students doing their theses and dissertations can actually um, submit their work to um, apply for this research award where they would then be granted the opportunity to present their research at one of our HERO events, so a think tank or the forum. Um, and with that, there's possibility that their work would be published um, in the American Journal of Health Promotion as well. Um, and so um, lots of ways now with this new student membership that the university students can get involved. Um, they would just have to log into the HERO website page, select membership, and there's now a selection option for student membership, and they would fill out that application, and um, we'd be happy to have them. Another way that they can get involved is actually being an intern at our HERO forum event. Um, we are changing that, though, um, I believe, to we're going to be selecting, since we now have a pool of our student members, um, we'll be selecting from that pool of um, those students to intern at the HERO Forum, which is a great opportunity for the students to network with industry professionals um, and kind of see maybe if they can get some type of job or position out of it um, through that networking opportunity. All right, and we actually didn't discuss the awards, um, but we do have a question that came in about the HERO Awards. And so can anyone nominate a person for one of the HERO awards? Do they need to be a HERO member to be eligible for national recognition? So I'll let Emily or Karen take this one. I'm happy to start and Karen, you um, are welcome of course to, to add anything. You, you do not have to be a HERO member um, to nominate somebody, nor do you have to be a HERO member to be a recipient. Um, of an award. Um, if you go to the the HERO website, um, and then there's a, a tab for forum, and you, you hover over that, and then there's a drop down that takes you to the awards page. Um, the there, There's detailed information about each individual award. The um, Healthy HERO Award 
is is a sponsorship based award. Um, so so that is not one that you would necessarily um, submit a, a nomination for. Um, these are individual level awards um, for for leaders in our field um, to varying degrees, depending on you know boots on the ground versus CEO level. Um, et cetera, but there's there's detailed information as well as nomination forms on the, the HERO Awards page. Karen, do you want to add anything? No, that was great, Emily. The only thing I would just um, point out is to let them know the deadline for nominations for this year. Yep, so April 30th is the deadline to submit for this year. We accept nominations on a, a rolling basis, um, but to be considered um, for an award this year, the deadline is April 30th. So plenty of time. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Um, next question is, if I have an idea for writing a blog post or for sharing our results on a HERO webinar, who can I contact? And is everyone eligible to partner with you on educational events? Karen, do you want to take this one, or? So there, so it sounds like, Mary, there were two questions. One about submitting a blog or participating in a webinar, and a second one about um, being involved in our educational event. Yep, is everyone eligible to partner with you on educational events? Yep. Okay, so um, we would welcome, we welcome guest bloggers um, and you can submit those to Mary. She can get those over to us, but um, you can also submit them to arian.mistral at hero-health.org or to myself, karen.mosley at hero-health.org. Um, for webinars, the, we do um, welcome proposals for webinar presentations. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because we didn't talk much about the member benefit to participate in webinars and our webinar series is um, a very well attended um, uh, educational offering through HERO throughout the year. We have one coming up tomorrow actually with Pat DeVerka who will be speaking on the topic that we'll be presenting to a group of CMOs at the CMO Summit next year, I'm sorry, next week in Fort Lauderdale. So um, yes, please send us your proposals. Um, we love to hear member ideas on, on new webinar topics that we haven't considered. As far as partnering on um, educational events, I'm not quite sure what that question might be inferring, but I did mention that members have the opportunity to participate or to volunteer for the education committee, um, which vets proposals specifically for the forum. Um, and uh, of course, we welcome members to submit proposals to speak at forum, but membership is not, um, is not required. Um, membership is also not required to sponsor, so anyone is, um, can partner with us at a sponsorship level. Um, Mary, any ideas on, on what else that question might be asking? Um, I, I'm thinking that it was mainly regarding the, like the webinar series and um, I, think you, I think you got to it. If that person has any other additional questions based off of what information was provided in Karen's response, please go ahead and send um, another follow-up question. Mary, and, and Mary, so Mary, thanks. Thanks for that clarification. It prompted me to um, insert one more little plug for a new webinar series that Emily Wolf is leading on this year. It's Committee Commons. And these are webinars that are going to be highlighting organizations that are doing um, great things, especially pertaining to the topics of our study committees. And, um, and only uh, current committee volunteers will be will receive the information and be invited to, to that specific webinar series. So that's a little plug and incentive to, um, to sign up for a committee. If you see one of interest, you will have access to the Committee Commons webinar series. Um, Emily, I hope I didn't overstep by throwing a plug there. 
No, that's great. I was I was waiting for an opening to add that. Um, I will say that the the theme for um, the committee comments webinar series this year is doing business differently. So as Karen said, um, highlighting uh, e examples of businesses that are approaching um, workplace culture, engagement, um, responding to social risk factors in the workplace, um, public private partnerships. Um, and more, but 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 approaching those areas of health and well-being from a different angle, um, and and as Karen said, that's an added benefit of serving on a committee. So I, I did want to mention just briefly that in addition to you know attending the webinars, benefits for serving on a committee are I mean really there's you get to know people on the committee, you make friends, you network when when you attend a think tank meeting or forum, you've, you've worked with some of these people already via the committees, in addition to sharing ideas, um, contributing to case studies, you know, reading articles, um, contributing to literature reviews. And, and I often find that you have some people that jump right in, you know, feel, feel really confident in terms of, of the skill set they bring to the table um, in terms of, of contributing. And then some people, I think, are a little more shy and worry that they don't have an exact skill set, maybe around research. Um, that's a hang up a lot of people have. They think, well, I'm not a researcher, so what can I contribute? I encourage everybody, um, no matter how seasoned you are or new you are, to consider joining a committee um, because we need all different skill levels, all different ideas, all different voices um, to contribute. So please email me if you have any questions about the committees. I regularly have calls with people that are about 30 minutes typically, and we go in depth to each committee. I explain what's happening, um, where we are with our current projects, and, and what's around the corner, and what it means to, to serve. So I'm happy to, to have a call with anybody. Thanks. Great, thanks, Emily. Um, Karen, and one more question for you, um, and this is about a member aspiring to become a member of the HERO Board of Directors sometime in the future, and if you have any thoughts on HERO members, on how HERO members can distinguish themselves in this profession. Also a great question. Um, I would encourage um, that person and anyone who has aspirations and desire to serve on the board to give me a call. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, it is really helpful to the, the board nominating committee to know when there are individuals who are interested in serving on the board. It is, um, it is a, an extreme pleasure and privilege to work with this group of leaders who uh, have heroes best interests and are, and are really forward thinking and and taking us, um, taking us, uh, moving us forward in the industry, and helping us to continue to establish ourselves as leaders in the industry and in the research that supports the best practices. So, yes, please give me a call or or send me an email. I'd love to have um, additional conversation with you. But and and really, that's that's how it starts: is just letting us know that you're interested, and and we can go from there. Thanks. Um, so with that, um, if anyone ha from the team, the HERO team, has anything else to add um, that they'd like to um, prior to us um, ending the, the webinar today, please do so. I know I have one thing that um, as these questions were coming in, um, really, really good questions and based off of how uh, students can get involved or even um, young professionals, I would say, at your organization, um, junior professionals. Um, we also offer a research internship that I did not mention in my response before um, that we have an application process for too, and that individual would help Jess and I um, with different research activities, including writing a commentary, getting their name out there um, with doing that, helping with um, other activities related to the scorecard or research projects that we have going on. Um, so again, if you have a junior professional at your organization or a student that you know is interested in research, you can put them in touch with Jessica and myself and um, we can get them that application to apply um, to be a part of that research uh, opportunity. 
So yeah. Jay, if you don't mind, I'll yeah. jump in with one other addition. When someone asked about sponsoring the HERO form, I certainly answered that question, but wanted to mention that there are additional avenues of, of visibility and sponsorship besides just the HERO Forum. We have the CMO, CHO Summit, the Healthcare and University Summits, as well as the Healthy HERO Award. And new for 2020, some virtual fitness events that are gonna be a lot of fun. So there are specialty audiences as well as just as the HERO Forum's general audience as and some uh, new, more fun things that uh, people can sponsor and get involved with. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, thank you, Pat. <laughs> Okay. Well, with that, um, if you have any more questions, please reach out. Um, you can contact any of us. Um, but if you want to contact me and it's a specific question, maybe it's for Emily, um, I can definitely put you in touch with that person. Um, if you have any questions about getting more members from your or, or colleagues from your organization involved, please reach out. I'm happy to set them up with an account and get them started and even go through this with them again and orient them to HERO and the membership benefits. So thanks for joining us today. Um, and we hope to hear from you and, and see you guys soon at one of our um, upcoming events. And with that, have a wonderful day. <laughs>